This video will show you how to change the fonts and text on any kind of My Anime List layout, including pre-made layouts and basic layouts. First of all, if you want to use a new font on your list, you probably have to import it. One way is to go to Google Fonts and choose a font there. This is the easiest way to add fonts, even if you can't find a specific font there. Usually there is one very similar to it. Near the end of the video, I'll show you how to install a downloaded font off of your PC, but for now, we'll go over using Google Fonts since it's easy and reliable. So after picking a font, copy this import code I show you here. We'll use this font Lobster because it's easy to see when it changes our list text. Now go to your CSS layout and add that import code to the top. So next, there's several ways to add this font to where you want on your list. If you have a pre-made layout, one way is to search your list CSS and find the property codes of font family. Here's one. You can replace the code after font family with the font name from the import you just installed. So our Google font we installed is Lobster, and we're going to replace the font name here with that. After saving, it shows up on the list on our header. You can do this with each part of the CSS that has font family somewhere on it to change all those fonts one by one to the new font you want. Or you could actually delete the old font family codes and the list fonts will change back to the default ones. This way you can undo fonts you don't like on your pre-made layout. You can also customize the font size and font colors with these codes as well. Another way to change fonts on any list layout is to change all of the fonts on the list at once. We can also add this code to the bottom with the font family to apply it to the whole layout. As you can see, nothing changed, and if it doesn't work, we can push it further to more of the layout by adding important to the end. And if that doesn't work as it did in here, we can change the body to an asterisk to push it to even more parts of the layout. And as you can see, it changed many of the fonts on the layout. Sometimes pushing a font to the whole layout does create errors, so be warned. However, at the end of the video, I'll provide you with some fixes for this problem. Now, lastly, we can install the imported fonts to specific sections of the list. You need the selector for each section you want to change, though. You can find these sections with Inspect Element in any browser.
So for example, the selector for the menu here is this, and if I paste it to the bottom of my CSS with the font family code we've been using, it would add the font to all non-links in that section. But of course, for that section, there's links there we want to change. So to target the links, we add an A to the end of the selector code. And it changes the links for that section. You can do this for each part of your list you want to change individual fonts for. Here's another example for you where I'll change the font family for anime titles on a basic layout. I already have a video on finding more selector codes, and I'll link it under the video so you can try that. And by using a mapped layout, it will be easier to find selectors too with inspect element. You can also ask us for a particular selector code if you need it to change a specific font on your list. Now, you don't have to import fonts that you have installed on your PC. You can just use the font family code in the name of the font. But other users won't see them unless they have that font installed too. But it is possible to install a font file downloaded on your PC to your list so you won't need to use Google Fonts. And other users will be able to see it. First of all, you need to download your font from a site and then upload it to Dropbox. Copy the share link and copy and paste the specific part of the link into a font face code on notepad like this. You name the new font here and you'll be using this name later in your CSS edit box. You need to save the notepad as a CSS file, and then upload that CSS file to Dropbox as well. Now you get the share link to the CSS file on Dropbox and insert this part into an import URL like here. I'll provide the import URL and the link to the font face CSS file under the video so you can look at it and copy the codes directly. You paste the complete import URL at the top of your CSS edit box. Now you can add that font name, which you chose, in your font face file to any section on your CSS edit box. And finally, if you want to fix broken icons like here, or have a backup font when your regular font isn't working, just add a backup font to your font codes. Separate them with a comma and put them at the end.
So good luck with your fonts and if you have any questions, ask us in the club linked below.